Okay, thank you for joining me today. So today I have with me Sophia Lafonso. She is a Southern girl with an East Coast flair. She grew up in Louisiana and Massachusetts and went to college in DC in Austin. She has a background in international development, she's always, but she's always had a creative side. She started her boutique event planning company last year, specializing in private parties, nonprofit, and corporate events. Welcome, Sophia. Thank you so much, Najita. So happy to be with you and your audience. Thank you. And you know what? Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for accepting my offer to share yourself with us. So tell me, as an entrepreneur, you know, as for me, as an entrepreneur myself, I know for many of us, there are times when, you know, maybe we have, I'm curious as to how has this journey been for you? Well, I think my journey has been um, unpredictable, I guess is the word. Um, as you noted in my bio, uh, my career really started in international development. And um, I really had a, a wonderful career, a full career doing that, working on a, a whole host of issues and with lots of different communities. Um, but I did always sort of have like this um, need for creativity and wanting to figure out ways to do more things creatively in, my, in a professional capacity. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, maybe per perhaps, you know, about two to three years ago, I really started thinking more about this and um, finding ways to have a, a, you know, a larger sort of maybe creative footprint um, and do more, you know, do more creative things. And, you know, I think that's what led me to sort of um, think about starting an event planning company and doing events full time. I've always enjoyed planning events. Um, and I've always been very organized and detail oriented. So it just seemed like the right, you know, really the right fit and also just the right time in my life um, to, to start something new. I, I, I joke with people that I'm an accidental entrepreneur because um, I don't come from a line of entrepreneurs in my family. And entrepreneurship was really not on my radar to be completely honest with you. But I think, you know, as you sort of grow and develop, um, you know, in a professional capacity, maybe sometimes other things start opening up to you and you start seeing things you didn't see before. And that for me was really, um, I think what led me here is that I started to see that there were other things I could do professionally um, other than what I was doing that could potentially, you know, be more fulfilling, um, again, allow allow for more of that creativity and just give me the freedom and flexibility to sort of set my own schedule. Um, so here I am today, you know, a year later and it, you know, I think entrepreneurship has its ups and downs and I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly growing and trying to figure out ways to better serve my clients. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I hear you. So what would you say for you? Um, was there something that totally surprised you? Or I know probably many things that surprised you that you were not expecting in this journey when you start, when you first started? That's a good question. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't really know where to start. Um, I think perhaps what has been maybe most surprising um, is that I think being an entrepreneur requires more than anything, mental toughness. Um, you know, you really have to have, I think you have to come in to, into this with a different mindset because you, you, when you, when you're first starting out, you're the jack of all trades, you know, you are the bookkeeper, you are the promoter, um, you know, you are, you're the face of the organization, you're the lawyer, you're like you're everything, you're the social media guru. So you take on lots of different roles. And obviously there's going to be some things that, that naturally you're, you're good at, you're better at. Um, you can kind of like, you know, you can do it well. And there are other things that you just have absolutely no clue what you're doing, <laughs> how to do it. And I think, you know, with that mental toughness, um, 
being an entrepreneur requires you not to panic, I guess, you know, when things aren't going well or when you're having a slow month. Um, but it really requires you to realize that, you know, with anything, there's going to be ups and downs and peaks and valleys. Um, and having that mindset is going to help you get through some of those tougher moments. And also um, understanding that you should rely on others. You should talk to other people that have um, gone through the same thing you've gone through, um, ask for recommendations, ask for suggestions about what to do. Because, you know, even though we all start off being the promoter, the bookkeeper, the lawyer, the social media guru, et cetera, um, when possible, if you can reach out to other people that can help you uh, and they can take some of that load off or they can teach you how to do certain things, I think it makes your experience that much, that much better uh, and that much richer when you know what needs to fall in place, you know, when and where. Yeah, no, and I think, you know, that's one of the things that I think is very important what you just shared because I think for many of us entrepreneurs, we start out, we're like wearing so many hats and for some of us, at some point, we're even having a hard time letting go of those, of some of these hats. And yeah. It, it prevents us from in some way growing because, you know, we, there are things that we might, we, not, we might not be great at. And so it's, you know, turning over to somebody, being able to turn it over. And actually, sometimes we may be thinking that we're saving money, but we're actually not making money because we're doing the things that really we're not great at, you know? No, absolutely. I mean, I think you said it perfectly. So I think definitely knowing what your strengths are, um, where you where you don't have those strengths, and making sure that you're that you're working with the right people that can help you, so that you can continue to do the things that you are actually good at and better serve um, your clients or provide whatever products or services that you may have to offer. Yeah, so I'm curious for you. I mean, I know you talked about in terms of what entrepreneurship, you know, how it, what led you there. And so on. what would you say, was there like a moment where, was there like a light bulb moment or maybe an event where you're like, okay, I'm doing this, this is what I need to do. Or, okay, thanks for what, thank you for this. I need to move to this. So I'm curious, was there that moment for you? I mean, I don't think there was a single moment. I think it was a series of moments. Uh -huh. um, I do, I think that I was getting restless at, um, in my job and I wanted to do something different, but I honestly didn't know what that was. So I kind of embarked on a journey where I was talking to lots of different people um, in different industries because I thought maybe that's what I wanted to do, you know? So I kind of started that, started doing these informational interviews. I thought maybe I might want to be a publicist or, you know, get involved in communications or, I mean, there was a whole host of things <laughs> that I was interested in at the time. Yeah. And I think it was like, sort of like through these conversations and um, that it started to maybe my true, my, I, don't, I don't know if I should say my true calling because I believe that, you know, people are called to do lots of different things and that we can have multiple careers. You know, I, um, I, love, I love how Marie Folio talks about it. She talks about being multi-passionate, you know, and I, I, I consider myself to be someone that is, that has lots of different passions. And um, so I think over the course of sort of like talking to different people, and journaling about the kind of life that I wanted to lead, yeah. what was important to me. I think that's really how I found my way to um, starting my company by Sophia and Co. So it really was a process. I didn't know, I didn't know at the very beginning that this is what I wanted to do, but I did know that I had the right skill set um, and that I had sort of like the vision in order to make it happen. But it definitely was a process. Yeah, no, I can definitely relate to that. And I think for me, you know, although I was working with a career coach, and I don't know if you recall, because Sophia and I have been, have been friends for years now. Um, I remember when I started working with her, I was like, okay, I just need to find another job. And as I was working with her and I was gaining more clarity about the lifestyle I wanted, that's when I realized I needed to work for myself. 
So I think sort of like it seems like in a way for you, you the lifestyle that you want sort of kind of led you. One of the reasons that led yeah. you to become an entrepreneur. And I think for many of many people, I think kind of like the lifestyle we want, the freedom and flexibility that we want, then we're like, okay, I can only do this what's in for me. You know? Totally, totally. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean I think the words freedom and the word flexibility, they just kept coming back to me as I was journaling, you know? Yeah. Every time I would write about the kind of career I wanted, the kind of environment I wanted to work in, those things, those values just kept rising to the top. And I think in order to have that freedom and that flexibility, um, I guess, you know, I, I was, I, I, it was like a light bulb sort of went off me like, okay, okay. In order to have that, you kind of have to work for yourself because you know that's really the best. That's really the best avenue to get that level of freedom and flexibility is to be your own boss. Mm -hmm. And then it was, a, and then it was a process of okay, what what is it do I have um, as a product or as a service that I can sell to get that freedom and flexibility? So yeah, yeah. and I remember you were really great at planning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I remember when I, we used to live together in D.C., and when I was getting ready to leave D.C., and I was like, okay, I guess I'll, she was like, well, you're not going to have a, a going away happy hour or something? And I'm like, okay, so let's talk about it, because I know that's your thing. Let's talk about it. So mm -hmm. I knew, like, she loves to plan things, so that's great. So, as an, so I'm curious, sometimes for many of us entrepreneurs, there could be times that maybe people close to us, or maybe not even close to us, people that we kind of know that may not understand our journey and sometimes can even be sort of critical of it. I'm curious, has this been your experience? Maybe not, but if you if it has, how have you handled that? Well, I mean, thankfully, I have I think I have a you know a close and tight circle of friends and family, and everyone has been supportive. Um, I was I was honestly very concerned about what my parents would think of it because, um, you know, my parents come are baby boomers, and sorry about that. <laughs> and they're part of the of a generation that I think. Um, believe that you should, you know, sort of like work for an employee, you know, um, they were really concerned. I, I don't think they were concerned about my, my level of skill sets, you know, and me being successful, but I think they were concerned about like, you know, those moments when things don't go so well, you know, how would I take that? How would I handle that? Um, you know, there, there's a lot of unpredicted, unpredicted, uh, unpredictability you know when it comes to being an entrepreneur and so I think like you know with anyone particularly parents they want to make sure that you're gonna be okay that you're gonna be able to pay your bills and things like that so naturally I think that they were um, a little nervous for me you know I think I think I'll, I'll say that nervous for me um, but always you know I think always supportive um, so it was, it was harder for me to talk to them openly about it. I could talk to, I, I feel like I could talk to other people more openly about my journey than I could talk to my parents about it because I didn't want to make them, you know, any more nervous than they already were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and like you said, when you also say that I know for myself, I have found it that, you know, it's also easier and maybe even more supportive in the sense of like when somebody knows that journey mm -hmm. but they know where you're coming from and it's sort of like we can support each other through it so, so i think you know at least it's been my experience that you know our families and our friends can be supportive but only to a certain extent because some of it they don't they don't get and like you said it is coming from a place of caring and love but they're like why are you doing this? <laughs> something at least you know so we're Definitely. So I can definitely understand because I know for myself, I do find myself being more comfortable sharing certain things with somebody that I know who is in the same journey as me, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think it definitely helps to have other to have friends mm -hmm. that are also on the entrepreneurship journey and they could be, you know, five steps ahead of you, two steps ahead of you, 
or, you know, I, yeah, exactly. But it's really helpful to have that sort of like, you know, sisterhood of entrepreneurs that you can talk to mm-hmm. and um, cause they get it, you know, they really get it. Yeah. So I'm curious what your thought, what your thoughts are on that. I know for myself, um, I don't know what your thoughts are on personal development, but I have found that this journey, the integral journey, and um, has been very transformative, and it has taught me so much about myself and helped me grow more than I've learned in any other career that I've ever had. So I'm just curious, has this been your experience? And actually, there's somebody called, I don't know if you know her, because I actually got to know her through Marie Forleo's program, B-School, Natalie Lucier. She made a comment a few years ago, and I was like, that is so true. And she was saying, entrepreneurship is like one of the best personal development schools. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. I mean, I definitely, I, I believe it. Um, I think it's definitely a way to really get to know yourself and really start to stretch yourself Mm -hmm. in ways that you probably weren't stretched before. Um, I think, I think this is, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a great gift for me. I think personally um, to try my hand at something that I haven't tried before in a professional capacity and just to learn, you know, all the different facets of the business um, that I need to learn. So I think it's a, it's a really, it's a really great way to sort of like get your feet wet and um, to test your skills. Um, I find that, you know, really the work, uh, being an entrepreneur has been, has changed me on the inside way more than it's changed me on the outside. You know, like, I think my perspective on things has changed. Um, my ability to, I think, you know, be confident to sell, you know, to sell my services. Um, those are things that, you know, I think you can only get when you're on this journey. And so those have been incredible gifts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's something that I'll always take with me. Uh, and I think that that obviously is the beauty of learning is that, you know, what you learn, you will always have and you can apply it to other aspects of your life. Definitely. And, and that, that is so true. Definitely. Because it's not like you're going to be just applying it in your business. You'll be applying it to other aspects. So definitely, I get that. So I'm curious for you, what would you say for, to, you know, women who are just beginning the journey or who are maybe considering or curious, what would you say to them? What would be your message to them? Is there something that maybe you wish you knew that you found <laughs> out in the journey or maybe something that um, you were not told <laughs> and you would love to share with them? I'm curious what that is. Oh, my. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> I think I would, I would really encourage people to start and starting can look completely different to everyone else with that starting with putting together your business plan starting with your website you know putting together an instagram page of like you know your products or your you know just start somewhere Mm -hmm. because the hardest thing is to start and we we tend to be our worst critics you know and we tend to nitpick at everything that we're doing um but i find that you know do not we should not allow perfect to be the enemy of the good Mm -hmm. and if you're waiting for things for everything to be perfect for everything to fall in line there will always be an excuse as to why something can wait and i really think that you, you know, you, me, everyone out there who's watching, they have um, a talent, they have a service, they have a skill, um, they have a personality that they bring that can't be replicated. Definitely. It can't be duplicated. So I think just start, you know, and see how it, see how it goes and then just see, you know, how you can build upon it and do more and do more and do more. Um, I think I really, 
I was fearful for a very, very long time. I was afraid, so afraid of starting because I was afraid that I would just fall flat on my face. Um, and that really held me back, you know? <laughs> it held me back for a while. I think I had a website for a whole year, um, but I didn't have, I, it wasn't even live. It was just like done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was done, but I hadn't like put it out there in the universe because I was like so scared um, about doing that. But <clears throat> I hope other people, you know, learn from me and not do what I did. You know, don't sit on something. Just really go forward, put it out there. Um, and your tribe, you know, your the people who who are who are for you, who will want to support you, who want to work with you, they will start to come. But you have to start in order for them to find out all about you. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I and I have to say, I love her website. It's it's really it looks really really great. And it's funny you mentioned the website because just yesterday I was at somebody's house and she has her website ready. And she actually, for her, she sells shoes and clothes. And, you know, she was like, yeah, I, I can't sell yet because my website is not ready. And I was like, okay, what do you need? You know, and as I'm there, she was, she was on her website. And I'm looking and I'm like, wow, that website looks great. So I was like, okay. And then her husband mentioned something about she's trying, she's like looking at, those top designers websites and that they, you know she's basically looking for it to be perfect and then I was like oh wow this is what's going on and I told her I was like you know what if you know all these things I mentioned that she has all these tabs that are like not working yet or she hasn't put I said just unpublish them and get going you know because your website looks great and I think exactly what you were saying that a lot of us, a lot of times we were like, okay, let you know. And Marie Forleo, I think you mentioned her before. Like she was, you know, you mentioned her. Maybe it was before we started recording. You know, she said, start before you're ready, because definitely the beginning is so important. And even for me, Sophia knows I wanted to start this show for a while. I've been like waiting and waiting, and I even got scared. It's like, oh my god, I've never done this before. But I, many times we keep ourselves, we hold ourselves back, and we're the only ones because people won't know about us if we don't put ourselves out there. So definitely, I, I love that what you share. Yeah, and fear, you know, fear is fear is a tricky thing, um, and I think it has held me back quite a bit, you know, and in, in life is just just being just being afraid. And like I said before, it's like that fear of failure. Like I don't want to be a failure. Yeah, um, I've not. You know, I feel like I've been lucky to where I haven't failed at things that I've really, really sort of wanted. Um, and if I failed, you know, then I, I kind of like bounced back and it wasn't like a huge deal. But, you know, to sort of quit your job and, to start some, you know, and to start something new uh, and for that to fail, you know, it's like. I had to de I had to dig deep about what <clears throat> what what was it that I was afraid of? Oh, okay, you know. So you're afraid that you know people will think that you're a failure. You know, mm -hmm. you're afraid of what other people will think about you. Um, you're afraid that you're not going to be able to pay your bills. You know, and all of these fears. You know, some of them are more valid than others. You know, obviously, you always want to have your bills paid. Um, but then some of these other things, it's like once I was able to identify them and realize that I could bounce back, even if I, you know, were to fall flat on my face, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be the end of the world. And I had to sort of start to look at fear m much more differently than I had been thinking about it before, you know, that it doesn't define me yeah. and that everything I do in life is a learn is, 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 is a learning lesson, you know, yeah. whether it's a success or a failure, it's really what you get out of the experience. And I think once I started to sort of um, embrace that concept more, then I was like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. Let me go. Fresh publish, you know, like do this, do that. Yeah. Um, and it's made, it's, it's made my life a lot easier. But, you know, you always have to dance with fear. You have to acknowledge it. Um, but you got to 
figure out what is the root, what's the root there that's really sort of like holding you back, and then how do you address it? Yeah, no, definitely. And, and it's like, I love how you were saying, like, you know, you acknowledge it and you're like, okay, what is this about, you know? And when you were sharing, of sharing about, you know, what would people say? And it's sort of like, it also makes you think, I don't know, I'm just thinking for myself, it would make me think at some point, it's like, okay, do I want, not want to try this thing that I'm really getting passionate about because what then in some way I'm realizing I'm giving people power over mm -hmm. my thought and my dream, you know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and then I was all, I was you know I would take it a step further and say okay well what would happen if I don't do this you know yes. okay I continue yes. to live my same existence which is fine you know my life it wasn't like there was anything wrong with the life I was living yes. um, but there'd always be that sort of nagging sense of like you could have tried you could have done more mm -hmm. um, you could have been successful at this so. It's like a what if, you know, you don't want to look back and say, what if I had taken this, this chance, you know? Yeah, yeah. So definitely, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. So I'm curious on your thoughts on life purpose. I mean, do you believe we all do have a life purpose to have one? And if you don't mind sharing it with us. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we all have a life's purpose. I think at the very core, my life's purpose is you know, to be of service. Mm -hmm. And when I look at everything that I've done in my past, you know, I spent 10 years in international development, um, working on, a, like I said, a wide variety of issues. And now um, I'm, I, you know, celebrated my first year in business. Um, everything, everything that I've, I've done, that I've decided to do career-wise, has really been about being of service to others. And um, I think that's a really, um, it's a core value from, from me. And I think finding ways to serve people is really important to me. It's, um, you know, from, you know, how can, can, I, can I serve them by helping them, you know, plan a party or plan an event that will allow them to, you know, that will free them up to talk to their guests, that will free them up to, you know, have conversations with their VIPs or their major donors. Um, that, it's another form of service, you know, and that's how I look at it. I always want to, um, you know, be helpful in any kind of way. And so I just kind of see this, the work that I'm currently doing as just another form of service. So. You know, I think, you know, no matter what I do in life, it's really about thinking about how can I um, be of use, you know, to other people, to organizations, um, and helping them to accomplish their goals. So, you know, I think that's part of the reason why I gravitated towards event planning, um, because it still allows me to interact with, with, with people. Um, and it allows me to provide a service that, that they can benefit from. Yeah, no, yeah, thanks for sharing that. What would you say you stand for in life? What would I say what? You stand for in life? Oh, what do I stand for? <laughs> and why? <laughs> okay, so um, I stand for social justice. Um, that's also another core value of mine. Um, just from, you know, my, my career, um, just being a part of different international issues. That's what I stand for. I think it's, 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 it's another, you know, it's, it's, it's really central to who I am as a person. And I think how we treat one another, um, how we re respond to injustice says a lot about us as people. So that's a really, that's a core value of mine. I think another core value of mine is um, love, love for self and love for others. Um, I think a lot of what's good in this world comes from love. And I think what's a lot of what's bad in this world comes from a lack of love. <clears throat> so I think that's also um, really important to me that 
I, I demonstrate that love and that I demonstrate that kindness um, in my personal life, but also in my professional life. And then I think the last thing I stand for is celebration. I think it's important to celebrate life's victories, the small things as well as the big things. Um, because, you know, you kind of, we can get caught up in uh, the problems of today. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, it's, it's okay to sort of get caught up in that because that's real life. Um, but it's also important to celebrate the small victories. And even no matter how small, because we have to recognize that we're always making progress. And so I think it's important to celebrate. Yeah. No. So um, as you know, I really like my audience is really, you know, empowered women. And I think you are an empowered woman yourself. So I'm curious, what are your thoughts on empowerment, specifically empowering women? And it can be in general. Yeah. Um, well, I believe that empowerment really does start with yourself, right? Knowing, knowing yourself. And knowing yourself is, it can be a, a lengthy process because we, we go through different phases, we grow, oh, change. Um, but really, like, I think knowing, knowing who you are and being firmly planted wherever you, wherever you are, um, it's really important to empowerment. And I think once someone themselves, um, is fully themselves, right. And fully embraces who they are, they just sort of like shine, you know, like they just shine like a beacon of hope. And, um, I think they're sort of able to transfer that light onto other people and, it's important to surround yourself with strong um, and yeah, strong women who love themselves, you know, warts and all, because we, you know, we're not always beautiful and we go through trials and tribulations, but if you embrace all that, all that you are, mm -hmm. the good, the bad, the ugly, I think that that helps other people to love who they are as well and that also empowers them so you know i really do believe the saying that empowered women empower other women and and I, it just goes back to what i was saying earlier about that um that self-love and that self-knowledge you know like or i guess self-awareness like really knowing who you are and being proud of hey this is me you know, like you can either like it, <laughs> you can love it, you can hate it, but hey, this is me and I like me. Damn it, I love me. And um, you, give, you give other people permission to love themselves yes. when you're able to demonstrate that for your, you know, when you're able to demonstrate that you have that unconditional love for yourself as well. Yeah, no, definitely. It's so true because, you know, people, you know, people look at us, they look up to, so, you know, we look at we look to each other. We look at and we, if we're seeing something, when people see something in us that they want for themselves, they're like, "Wow, if Sophia can do it, wow!" Like I, I love her confidence. I love that, and it's like I'd love to become so definitely. I truly, really, like you said, I love it how you said the whole thing about self empowerment. Like when you are comfortable in your own skin, when you are grounded and, and you know who you are you inspire someone else to do it because you can't do it if it's not if you're not or if you're not experiencing it yourself you know so yeah. like that definitely. And it, it's crazy because you know i obviously you know i was talking to you earlier about um the internal struggles i was having about starting mm -hmm. and you know all of this conversation was happening in my head you know it wasn't like i was having these conversations yeah, extremely but these are all the things that was going on in my head. And once I finally did start and um, sort of promoting myself, I had several women in my life say, you, are, you have inspired me. You know, your example, like, is amazing. And it just gives me, um, it's got me to start thinking about, you know, other things that I want to do in my life. And I think you never know what kind of impact you can have on other people by just you 
you being brave, just by just you starting, you can inspire other people to do the things that they want to do. And that's a beautiful thing. No, I, I, that is so true. So, so true. And that I'm so happy you share that because that is very, very true. Because just like, I think it was, I don't remember, I think it was sometime last year, I had a Facebook friend. Well, we're, we were friends. I mean, we've been friends for a while, but we haven't seen each other. We're not in the same state. She reached out to me on Facebook. She was like, I want to thank you for inspiring me. And this is like, I'm thinking, okay, because I work with entrepreneurial women too, but I'm like, she's never worked with me. She's never had a, even a free session with me, coaching session or anything. And she's like, I really want to thank you for inspiring me the way you live your life. She said, you have inspired me. She's an artist. She paints, but she had not been painting in a while. She said, I've chosen that. I'm going to take Fridays off at work. I'm going to work extra hours and I'm going to work like 10 hours a day, something like that. And she was like, I'm going to take Fridays off and I'm going to dedicate Fridays and weekends to me starting, you know, I'm going to start painting to my artwork because that's the only way she was like, I can't, I can't become, a, you know, the artist that I want to be if I'm not giving time to my painting. And she said to me, thank you. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh my God. Just like, and like, and this is not somebody I speak to even all the time on the phone. So just by, you know, her seeing the way I live my life and what I share on social media, you know, I can't really remember if she's on my email list, but that's how, but so definitely you, you know, when, what you do impacts other people, you know, Absolutely. and you inspire them you, and you have no idea. That's why I always, I often tell people, you know, when I share myself, I know, you know, the person listening to me or everyone listening to me may not work, choose to work with me and pay to work with me, but I can still impact them because in, in some way, in some shape or form. So same for all of us, you know, so I love that. Definitely. So this is going to be my last question to you, Sophia. What do you believe the world needs more of? And if we had it, it would make a huge difference on, in the world. Um, love. <laughs> yep, that's my number one. <laughs> yeah. I definitely believe that the world needs um, needs more love. I think love is a is a powerful emotion, and if we are able to love, I think we're also able to empathize, and we're able to symp and sympathize um, with the broader population. Um, and I think, you know, if you, when you, when you love someone else, I imagine that you're able to see a little bit of you in them. Um, and you can be a bit more, uh, mindful and thoughtful about the word, your words and your actions. So, you know, I, 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 this is just something that I believe that, you know, really we, um, more love could make the world a better place, a better place for everyone. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it gets any better, anything better than that, but <laughs> I definitely need more love in the world. Yeah, well, I mean, and like you said, you know, I think um, we can even like, leave it at that if you want, because I mean, if you have more, yes, but I'm just saying love, I truly believe that love heals everything. So I think that if we would have more love, we would have more empathy, more compassion, more respect, like, you know, and all of these things, more kindness, you know, because I know for myself, I have to be honest, I don't always show up as love, and I, I can tell, and if I'm not being kind, I'm not, love is not present right, right now, mm -hmm, right in mm -hmm. that moment. If I'm not being, if I'm not showing empathy, if I'm not being understanding, then definitely love is not there, you know, so, so yeah, definitely. So I want to tell, I want you to tell people about where they can find out about you and, you know, share your website, social media, and maybe you want to share a little bit about your work so they could, I mean, you did, but if you want to give a little bit more detail. Yeah, sure. So my company is by Sophia and Co. And we work on the East Coast, primarily in New England, the tri-state area, um, and the Washington, D.C. area as well doing um, nonprofit corporate events as well as private parties. Um, so we host a wide range of events 
and um, it has been it's been a lot of fun. I get to work with some amazing clients, so I feel really fortunate um, that they choose to work with me um, to celebrate with them, whether it's a fundraiser or a gala or a dinner party or a birthday party. Um, that I get to be a part of of, of their cele- of their celebrations. So. I think if people would like to find me, you can certainly check out my website. It's www.bysophiaandco.com. And you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at by Sophia and Co. Yes, yeah, by Sophia and Co. <laughs> okay, great. And I, I mean, I would say your clients are just as lucky and, you know, it's that they have to work they get to work with you so it's you know I would say thank you yeah so thanks again for joining me and to everyone listening everyone watching us thank you again for joining us love and light to all and Sophia will be talking again soon I hope okay thanks for having me bye